This spreadsheet modeling on risk and return shows the construction of the efficient frontier and calculation of parameter estimates for the CAPM. I'm Pat Obi, Professor of Finance at Purdue University, Calumet. In the 55 month period ending in July of 2013, I obtained monthly price data for the value weighted S&P 500 stock index the food company Kellogg's stock symbol is K and the home improvement firm Home Depot stock symbol HD. The first thing to do here is to calculate the corresponding monthly returns using the logarithmic form as I show all over um, in this column. So to do so you use the um, function equal ln all right, and let's do it right here actually. All right, ln open parenthesis, and you click on the current return or the current price divided by the preceding price, close parenthesis, and that's it right here. So that's how we got this, and then you can copy it across and copy it down. So now continuing we proceed to obtain the parameter estimates. We do need to know though what the sample size is. So to get this 54 I use the count command and you can use uppercase or lowercase it doesn't really matter and then you can choose any of these uh, columns alright starting from the first observation and work your way to the last one All right, and that's how you get the 54 right here. Next up, we calculate the sample means because the sample means are our measures of return. So use the average command to calculate the simple arithmetic average. You go to the top of the column, click, hold down, and drag it all the way down, highlighting all the observations in the column, close parenthesis, and then you can copy across to find the rest of them. You can leave it as uh, in decimal form or you can format percentage it doesn't matter. Next up sample variance for that you use the VAR function caution do not choose VARP that's going to give you the population variance which divides by the overall sample size. Now because in financial analyses we typically work with samples you most of our calculations are going to be uh, parameter estimates based on samples. So sample variance is VAR open parenthesis and let's go to the top of um, the input data set again and again you can quickly highlight by holding down the sh holding down the shift key and then you hold the end key on the keyboard you hit it and then you hit arrow down key that's how you quickly grab all the elements within the column then you hit enter. You copy across Right. Now variance is a squared variable. Therefore, leave the results as is. Do not try to format using the percent or dollar sign or whatever. Just leave as is. Standard deviation, you have a choice between either using the square root function SQRT and then clicking on the variance, close parenthesis, and copy across, or you can use the STDEV function. Again, don't use STDEVP because if you put P you're calculating the population standard deviation which divides by N the total observations so don't include that open parenthesis and let's go to the top of the file if you choose to use the STDEV function alright highlight all the elements within the column close parenthesis and that's it it's gonna fetch you the same result then you can copy across and you're still good either or now, standard deviation removes the squaring by imposing the radical sign on the variance because square roots is the opposite of squaring and therefore you have a choice to either leave your result in decimal form or to impose a unit of measure and since these the input data are rates of returns you can choose to use percent formatting if you want to. So you can either leave it this way or you can leave it this way. Coefficient of variation measures risk per unit of return. So for that, you hit equal our measure of risk is standard deviation divided by our measure of return 
is the mean and that's it right there and then you copy it across so this means here no pun intended that for every unit of return we have 3.4 units of risk so as you can see the larger the coefficient of variation or standard deviation or variance the more risky the investment because it tells us that the returns are very volatile now from what we see here we find that based on any of these parameter estimates that the standard deviation for Home Depot is the highest but so also is its return as you can see here so it has the highest return and the sorry the highest risk of 6.37 percent and the highest return of 2.64 percent per month on average because these are monthly data Kellogg's has the lowest risk and also goes with the lowest return so as you can see the market tends to be quite rational in its risk averse nature every now and again and this is one of uh, those uh, instances the higher the risk the higher the, ris uh, the return all right now we need our measures of association beginning with covariance for that we go to data data analysis choose covariance and OK while cursor is blinking there we go up to the top highlight all of these beginning from the labels and go all the way down check labels in first row click here for output range and then click right here so your cursor is blinking in that box while it is you choose a spot on the spreadsheet like here and click OK let me kinda of bump those uh, font sizes up some now observe that the diagonal elements that you see here are actually the variances because the covariance of a variable with itself in this case S&P and S&P is actually is equal to its variance so this is the variance of S&P the variance of Kellogg's and the variance of Home Depot however observe if I inch up just a tad bit all right observe that these variances if I were to increase the um, number of decimals a bit observe that these are not quite identical to these ones over here why not but that's because by default Excel unnecessarily really gives us the population variance alright so we need to get rid of the P alright you click on this and you go up here and get rid of the P alright and you click on this and you go up here and you get rid of the P now they are identical alright over here so and as you would imagine these these off diagonal elements which are the covariances are also population covariances they are divided by n the total observations as opposed to n minus 1 the degrees of freedom so the correction factor here is n divided by n minus 1 which is the sample size divided by the sample size less 1 so we can uh, get that calculation by writing equal you click on the sample size divided by open parenthesis the sample size less one and I know in this case it's easy we could have just easily typed 54 divided by 53 all right but we just want to build a global spreadsheet that way for any reason our the number of observations in our input data ch uh, change uh, then we this will automatically change and everything below it will also automatically change so with that let's recalculate the covariances we hit equal we click on this guy right here multiplied by the correction factor we do the same down below it click on this multiplied by the correction factor and finally right next to it click on this multiplied by the correct uh, I beg your pardon undo alright we stay here hit equal click on this multiplied by the correction factor and that's it now these values are identical with these here so you can just copy these copy and then put them put them back in here however don't just paste ordinarily because if you do so it's gonna carry if I hit escape if I click on this you see these are calculated cells so the computer is gonna move those calculations and then give you some odd funny numbers so again let's copy that let's copy those and then place them right here paste choose paste as values that way it doesn't 
go with the cal with the calculated function. So again, copy that and put it right here, pasting as value. Now you can fill up your covariance because by default Excel gives you what's called a half matrix. So you can fill it up over there. You hit equal. This point here is K and S and P, which is the same thing as this here, S and P and K. Right next to it, hit equal is HD and S and P, which is the same thing as S and P and HD. And finally, that there is K and HD. All right. Now we have a full matrix looking good. Just like I have it here. Now then, next up would be correlation coefficient data, data analysis, check correlation, okay. While cursor is blinking in there, go up to the top of the file, highlight all the input data uh, observations, check in labels in first row, output, then click here. While cursor is blinking there, go down, find a spot such as this, click, and you see the cell address register and OK. And that's it. Now the um, correlation coefficient is already adjusted and so you need not correct for degrees of freedom. It'll look better though if you fill up the half metric so you can have a full 3 by 3 metrics. Covariance and correlation coefficients are measures of association. They give us a sense as to the degree of diversification of a portfolio. The higher the covariance, the less would be the uh, diversification potential because if two securities have a high covariance, that means they move together, uh, they move in common a lot. And so what are you going to get out of it as far as diversifying away on systematic risk is concerned? So you really, for purposes of diversification, are seeking a portfolio where the securities have very low covariances. That way, if one is doing badly, the other ones may still have a smile on their face, so to speak. Correlation coefficient is an even more succinct measure of diversification because it's, it's a bounded parameter estimate. It ranges from negative 1 to positive 1. If you have a portfolio where the securities have a, a correlation coefficient of positive 1, then there's not going to be any diversification benefits at all because the two securities will tend to move in tandem. However, if we have a portfolio where securities have a, a correlation coefficient of minus 1, there is actually the possibility that you can find a set of weights, meaning the proportional investment such that you can completely eliminate the risk of that portfolio. So that tells us, therefore, that as correlation coefficient tends toward negative 1, the diversification benefits increase quite significantly. All right, this concludes this portion of the presentation. In part two, we shall show the construction of the efficient frontier, beginning with the calculation of the standard deviation of the portfolio and the mean of the portfolio.